Well, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. The two-day public hearings organized by the Senate as a prelude to an amendment of Nigeria's constitution kicked off yesterday. Surprisingly, the creation of state police, devolution of powers to state, and fiscal federalism featured prominently across the 12 venues nationwide. The two-day public hearings have been organized by the Senate Committee on Constitution Review. The hearings continue today and we'll like to find out if this would make a change or if it would be one of the multiple hearings that we have had in Nigeria. Joining us on the phone from Abuja is the co-convener of Center for Liberty, Ariyo Dari Atoye. Good morning, Mr. Atoye. Thanks for joining us. Uh, good morning. Thanks for having me. So there's been a lot of talk really about constitutional review, constitutional amendment. Uh, we're seeing different governors saying, let's go back to the constitution of 1963. There's just a lot about that. Um, from your own point of view, how do you see it? And what do you think is most important for us as a nation at this time? Well, I think uh, constitutional uh, reform or constitutional review is always an important exercise in the fear of a nation. However, I don't think the current leadership of the National Assembly and the Ninth National Assembly itself can muster the political will to do the needful. The current executive, led by uh, the president, appears unwilling to accommodate robust reforms that can help to unbundle this country and unleash our potentials. Because you need the legal framework to unleash the potential of a nation and to address our challenges. People have been talking about restructuring, which I believe in 100%, that should follow the pattern like the 1963 Republican Constitution. But this president is unwilling to do it. And unfortunately, the National Assembly has, you know, given itself a reputation as a rubber stamp of the executive. So this makes it a bit very difficult. So that's why I share the concern of those who said that this could be an exercise in futility, or a ritual just to justify the allocation of money for this exercise that has become and I fear of the National Assembly every four years. Like I said earlier, this is an important exercise that ordinarily should help us to mitigate our challenges at this trying time in the affair of our nation. This should be an opportunity for us to possibly get a brand new constitution or possibly to reform the constitution to an extent that we're able to act, achieve restructuring. The current political actors have not demonstrated that way. That is our concern as a nation. It's the reason why I, as a person, did not submit a single memo to this conference. I deliberately refused to do this simply because this same National Assembly has refused to show commitment to the Electoral Reform Act that we have been pursuing. This same National Assembly started the process of reviewing the Electoral Amendment Act. They told us they were going to pass it in December 2020. They said they were going to pass it on or before March, 20, March 31, 2021. They refused to do so. And I don't think Nigerians can trust this same night National Assembly to do or to give us a constitution that will address our concern. A National Assembly that is found wanting in Litsu cannot be given much to do. So I'm sorry if I sound pessimistic. I, I'm well, sorry if I sound a bit uh, on the other side, probably not having confidence in this National Assembly, but uh, this is what this National Assembly has demonstrated over time. It's not my making, it's not the making of other Nigerians, but this National Assembly has not shown the will to amend this constitution to reflect the yearnings and aspirations of Nigeria. All right, Mr. Atoy, uh, let me, let me quickly step in here. Um, uh, you know, you would continue with your thoughts. Um, I'm asking the question in the same direction. You're not the only person. I listened to uh, Professor Emeritus yesterday uh, on a different platform, and he shared similar thoughts. And he said uh, the National Assembly, you know, cannot be given the responsibility of uh, amending the Constitution that they are fully involved with. You know, it, you know, it, it makes uh, them judge and jury of, you know, a case that they are very, very um, involved in. Um, but I, I want you, you know, to share, you know, why you think this is um 
because, of course, I believe a lot of Nigerians understand what is needed with regards amending the constitution. You know, the state police, the restructuring, and some of all those things. So, what do you think might be the reasons you you know you see this national assembly as you know not very likely to agree to make these changes? The 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 reason why I've expressed this statement is very clear to all Nigerians. There was nothing in no, there was nothing harmful about what the southern governor said at the Asaba summit. There was nothing harmful about the communique that was released as a result of that meeting. But this same leadership of the National Assembly, led by Senator Ahmed Lawan and Speaker Gwajabi Amila, came out after that summit to lampoon the outcome of that resolution by these governors. And when you looked at these outcomes, we're likely about what we're talking about today, constitutional review, the items that have been listed by the National Assembly itself. It means that they are not sincere about it. So when there is no sincerity of purpose, every other thing is an exercise in futility. Nigerians must understand this. Ordinarily, ordinarily, we should have demonstrated as a people to you know, to demonstrate that uh, public will by, by cutting this current process led by the, the night national. And Jan should have boycotted it. But again, people just let us give them benefit of it down. But for those of us who have analyzed and reviewed the action of the current National Assembly, you will know. Go and check all the statements attributed to the President of the Senate. Go and check the statement attributed to the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Go and check the body language and statement I mean, attributed to the President of the Republic of Nigeria. A combination of these three key leaders who are very, very key in terms of amending this constitution and getting it assented after it has gone through the legal framework of the passage of the, at least 24, 25 states of, of the Federation for validation, you will see that there is no sincere commitment. Ordinarily, ordinarily, this should have been an opportunity for this National Assembly to give Nigerians a pass to owe in a trying time like this. Or at a period where things are so difficult and challenging for Nigerians, where people are looking for solutions. This is a very good opportunity for the administration of General Buhari and the Ninth National Assembly. But they are not committed. It's not rhetoric. It's not a knee-jerk approach. You see, people have seen what they did and said during when it was convenient for them. People have analyzed them in and out. They have not shown any commitment to a nation that works. They are not interested. It, that is the truth. Okay. And, so and, and Nigerians should not be she should take him for a ride simply because. And it, let me also say this, and I will say it anywhere that there is always money allocated for this exercise every four years and they must justify why this money should be spent it is all about that and so you're saying you are you are you basically saying that you agree with afe babalola when he says this constitutional review is a waste of time and energy my sister let me tell you something very simple i did been it's not a waste of time and energy what they ought to have done was first to tell Nigerians that we are bringing a consultant or consultants together to review all the documents that have been submitted in the last 10 years. Yeah. Then after reviewing those documents, then they will produce a single document and make this document available to Nigerians that these are likely our recommendations in terms of constitutional review. Then Nigerians will look at this document. They will say, yes, this National Assembly is correct, but amend this area. That should have been the process. Not, mm -hmm. again, telling Nigerians to be submitting recommendations. No, Nigerians have done that consistently since 1999 before 1999 so the only thing that will show a good faith on the part of this national assembly is to collate all these documents together work with consultant and a technical team or a joint committee to review and give us provisions that they consider that they want to review in the night so so why do you think that these things is not are not being done i mean of course we've had other exercises like this there was a national confab 2014 why do you think that the present government did not think in a direction to basically implement those or take a look at take a review of all the other resolutions and begin to find ways to implement them rather than constitute another one the the problem is largely due to our fourth line sectional interest 
political interest and all of that. The 2014 conference and the recommendation, that document contains that recommendation is still most important piece of document we have in Nigeria today. Hmm. They are not committed simply because the, this president is sectionally minded. And I'm also worried, let me say this for the first time, and I'm not also happy with the man who even convened the 2014 conference, former President Jonathan. President Jonathan should have made this an advocacy in terms of implementing this. Why do you have to convene a conference and there is a document and you are working with this current administration, going on errand for this administration, and now there is a, at the period in time like this, you cannot write to the National Assembly to reconsider the 2014 conference instead of going through another ritual. Ordinarily, President Jonathan should have been bold enough to do that, and that Nigerians also, I mean, give Nigerians the benefit of the doubt. So they are not committed, some of members of the ruling political elite, Mm. Some of them, because of sectional interest, they don't they don't want restructuring. People are looking to see Nigeria as a country that could be manipulated or, or should be manipulated to serve individual and sectional interests. That, that is exactly the problem. Our 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 what do you call it? Uh, fault lines are becoming a gully, and it is consuming us as a people. So it's very important that we look at these things. And we are not being pessimistic or not because we just want to, gay, to go against what the Night National Assembly is doing. No, we want this thing to be done in good faith. We want sincerity of purpose. We want the National Assembly to indeed believe in Nigeria and Nigerians. It's not because we just want to antagonize or to criticize the government. All right. The other is nations there... have done this successfully. Uh, Mr. Toy, uh, is, is there any other way around this? If you have zero faith in the Night uh, National Assembly, is there any other way that this can be achieved? That's one. And then also, um, look yeah. at the, the numbers, because there's also been you know, certain caucuses in the National Assembly who have supported the uh, um, uh, resolutions by the Southern Governors. So is there also a possibility that there might be enough numbers in the National Assembly that might be able to push uh, for this? Let me say in clear terms, the only way, or there are, there are two ways to it. Number one is for the current leadership to show that they are sincerely committed on their own and say that we know that Nigerians are worried about our our comments in the past, our attitude to nation building. We want to show that indeed we are committed to this process. So after collecting your view, these and these and the things we are going to do and quickly produce a document that will indeed show indeed that they are committed to restructuring significant devolution of power, you know, which is, is just a subset of restructuring and other things that Nigerians are actually yearning for. But what I think is actually going to be the main part for Nigerians to know is this, is for us to prevail on this National Assembly, to pass the Electoral Act Amendment and ensure that we have electronic transmission of results. Now, our clear hope to nation building and a new electoral, I mean, new constitutional review is a new leadership in 2023. The current leadership cannot give us a Nigerian the Nigeria that is well restructured. So mm -hmm. Nigerians must now invest in the 2023 general elections and produce lawmakers and a president that will come and restructure Nigeria and give us a nation that works. The current leadership and actors cannot do it. They must convince us they can do it. Okay. But if Nigerians want to have a pathway out of this, it's for us to insist that the National Assembly give us a new electoral amendment that is transparent, open, and electronic driven. After that, Nigerians will demonstrate the political, I mean, the electoral will through their term to elect leaders that will start from 2023, May 29, commence the process of reviewing our constitution and probably giving us a national conference of sort that will harmonize, not a national conference that will come and do presentation, Okay. But it's a, 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 a small conference that we accommodate all the recommendations and work on them. All right. And all give right. the National Assembly a document to implement. That Th is just the only way out of. Thank you what very we much, Mr. Ario Dari Atoye, co convener of the Center for Liberty, uh, joining us from Abuja. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts on the constitutional review. Thank you for having me. Have a great day.
All right. Uh, stay with us. Of course, uh, we still have a little bit more to share with you on The Breakfast this morning. Uh, earlier, we spoke about uh, suspects that were paraded by the police, who, of course, uh, Nigerians have uh, spoken out against and identified a few of them, uh, claiming that these persons are innocent. Uh, we'll be joined uh, uh, right after the short break by our guest to quickly share his thoughts on these uh, latest incidents. We'll be back.